Welcome to the Smith and Rowan Show. Let's join our host, Alan Smith and Jeff Rowan. Hello, world. I knew that you would be waiting anxiously for the first unplugged Smith and Rowland podcast of the new year. This will begin your new year great, and it can take you through this year with a paramount amount of knowledge, wisdom, and eloquent, silky tones from our voices. Now I'd like to introduce to you the inferior part of our team, Alan Smith. (laughs) (laughs) He done it again. Well, from one inferior to the other, how you doing? (laughs) I'm doing wonderful. (laughs) Second day of 2024, Mr. Rowland. I can't believe we can't we're believe here. We made I it. Can, I, I can't believe we're here. I, I'll be honest with you. I cannot believe that we are in 2024. <laughs> you know, there's a scripture that says God teaches us to know wisdom is to uh, number our days. My wife wrote a song called "Teach Me to Number My Days." Wow. And uh, if you get right down to it, ten years is 120 months. That's not very long. It's just not. It goes by in such a flash, and then a decade is gone. And if you think of it, there's been a couple of decades that seems to have escaped my memory. So I'm actually only 40 years old. So I'm just going (laughs) to go with that. (laughs) Well, that's probably a good number to go with. Listen, (laughs) James Robinson has written an article on the stream here the first of the year. He actually wrote it December 31st, but approaching the new year that we find ourselves in. And Jeff, this article, I think, let's maybe take a few points out of it. But when you think of 2024, the first thing that hits me is an election year. We've been talking about this uh, election year now for the last four years <laughs> yeah. and uh, three years. And there's a lot of unrest around the world. Everybody, you know, we're hearing everybody say uh, war in 24. Yeah, I mean, and every, that's, you know what, the things that's out there, Alan, that I've read about 24, everyone is expecting it to be a kind of a rough time in the yeah, world. Yeah, tough year, tough year. Yeah. And Well, we know that two-thirds of the world will be disruptive just because that many will be talking about Donald Trump. I mean, <laughs> that's going to be the topic of the globe. Oh, and yeah. So that's enough to keep us, keep everybody in between yeah. the pros and the cons. It'll be, a, we know what a lot of the conversation is going to be going into yeah, boy. this election. But anyway, I we discussed it, I think, yesterday. But Putin had a comment that, you know, he said what's happening to Donald Trump is just proof that democracy doesn't work because it's obvious that one of the parties is trying to destroy the other one politically. Yeah. Uh, in, in orthodox means, un, unconstitutional mm-hmm. means. And right. so to him, it was just proof. And, you know, you have to kind of agree with him to the extent of trying to keep another man off the ballot and to try to destroy a man outside of the electoral system that we have here as to not to let the people decide that they're trying to get rid of him. And I'll be honest with you, Jeff, I'm just very, very concerned of assassination. I hate to say the word Yeah, I am too. Yeah, at least attempts. I think we're going to see attempts if without a doubt, I believe that. I mean, you know, as well as I do, the way the snipers are this day, they can about pick off the man on the moon. But anyway, I just we just need to be in prayer that it's not so much for Trump as it is our whole political system is yeah. really being railroaded by the far left, or I'll call it the Luciferian thinkers. Yeah, the way I know yeah. to say it, and because I, in all honesty, the far left has been hijacked. I mean, liberal to a lot of people is a good term, and it is to me also when it's biblical. But literal today, it's been hijacked. The literal side, the little movement's been hijacked by Luciferians, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it has. By people who are just for Lucifer. And it's one thing to be right and left, and then just Luciferians. So anyway, I think that's the year we're looking at, Jeff. If you allow me, I'll read just a little bit in the beginning of James Robinson's article here. He says, are you ready for this year? That's a question. Mm. Here in the United States, it's another election year. Remember the last one as we popped the champagne corks? Metamorphically, of course, four years ago, we had no idea we were about to face a global shutdown from an engineered virus. Now, pastors being arrested for holding in-person services, a summer of burning cities, an election marred by unlawfully changed election procedures. 
and controversial results in the beginning of colonization that would grow to the size of New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, combined about 14 million. So James is pointing out here that, you know, what we've had in the last four years and what's upcoming. Now, I will say this is James Randall Robinson, yeah, to be yeah, yeah. confused with, with yeah. the uh, founder of the stream here. But this is a, a writer here. But other, anyway, he's saying hopefully we won't have another pandemic, but these other issues aren't going away. Yeah. Any comment there, Mr. Faithful Roland? Well, I mean, he brings up the pandemic and with the uh, things that's going on in the world, you've got China threatening Taiwan. You have the, the war in Ukraine. You've got Israel and, and Gaza. We're stretched thin. <laughs> The Not North to mention Iraq, Iran, and all the yeah, other countries well, around them. Well, yeah, we've had a hundred, over a hundred of our places in Syria and Iraq that's been bombed. U.S. soldiers are now in the crossfire of all that's going on. There is, I say again, everybody's waiting on World War III. I'm saying it's already started and we're in the middle of it. It's already taken place. If another pandemic is released, it would not surprise me because that would ensure that voting procedures in America for this election year would stay the same way it was during COVID. And not many people realize the fact that our voting procedures changed because of the pandemic and allowed mail-in ballots at a level that we had never seen before. And because of that, there was more people that voted than ever before. It was awful hard to have good oversight on the election to protect against fraud. And some believe that the last election was fraudulent. Whether you believe that or whether you don't, that's up to you. I'll leave that up to you. But I will say that it, it <coughs> looks awful suspicious to me that we may face another pandemic for the sake of keeping those election laws in place. And yep. if that happens, then America, once again, is going to be the victim of a very suspicious election cycle. And I think we're already there just simply because you've got 91 counts against Donald Trump. And unfortunately, Alan, I almost have to agree with Vladimir Putin. He said this is playing out before the American people that mm -hmm. their system of democracy just doesn't work when you can mm. persecute a political rival. Yep. And that's what's yep. going on. That's what's happening right before our very eyes. That's what's going on. And the problem also is, Jeff, is so many of the American people just don't see what's right before their very eyes. Yeah. That's the scary part. On the pandemic side, Jeff, it's it's hard to deny that we don't have some viruses floating around now that we've never seen before. And they could be an offshoot of the, you know, of the other virus. It could be an offshoot of that going through mutations. I mean, who knows? But for sure, yeah. I mean, I'm 71 these days and we're having viruses now that I've never seen before. And I've had a few of them myself knowing yeah. that their characteristics are different. So there's some things going on now that are definitely and not normal. I'll say this too, Jeff. I think that the dark side of the spiritual world is at such a ramped up in its activity, preparing you and I are the persuasion that the rapture of the church is pretty close. So that being the case, the dark side wants the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit off of the planet. And you and I know that happens at the rapture of the church. Yeah. Because as the believers go out, so the Holy Spirit goes out with the believers, which I don't think a lot of people consider that. Now, what's going to really be a shame is if the Holy Spirit's been pulled out and you didn't know he left. That's going to be a huge that's concern. That's going to be bad. That's yeah. going to be bad. And that's going to be part of the issue. But why does the world get so bad? And that's another argument you and I get into with people is, well, if they say, well, they don't believe in the rapture of the church, well, you, how does the Holy Holy Ghost leave. You, you've got yeah. an absence of the Holy Spirit during that time. That's the reason you have to endure to the end to be saved. You got to go to the end of that thing to run into the Holy Spirit, you see, because the Holy Spirit's been taken out. So you says right there in scriptures, so it's black and white. You have to endure to the end to be saved, which proves to you that the Holy Ghost isn't here. Because if the Holy Ghost was here during that time, it's instantaneous. So the Holy Spirit's here, enters your heart, and then there you go. You're good to go. But it's obvious that something's changed. And so as the dark side, my point is... Is, is wanting to, it is looking forward to the rapture of the church, you know, yeah. which most people don't seem to understand. Also, Jeff, we ran into another article or another little video of, of how that the dark side is looking forward to a dark revival. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, and it, a, it called, called our mind. 
I just wanted to follow up on something you said there. With the strain of the viruses that we now have, things that we've never before dealt with, it's in keeping with the spirit of the fourth horse of the book of Revelation where pestilence mm-hmm. abounds. But we watched that video today, this morning earlier, Alan, on how the dark side is waiting on a time when they can be released, actually slaughter Christianity uh-huh. and anyone who names the name of Christ. There's something holding them back, and that something that is restraining is the Holy Spirit. That's when right. the Holy Spirit is withdrawn, the world goes dark, mm-hmm. and darkness prevails. Darkness actually rules in the natural world at the absence of the Holy Spirit. So mm-hmm. when that takes place, it's not going to be it's not going to be very hard for the Antichrist to assume power over the world when darkness mm-hmm. prevails. There will be mm-hmm. a unified presence of darkness and people mm-hmm. will clamor for it. They'll want it. You know, the delusion will be very easy during that time because there's no light to shine in the darkness. And they're waiting. The dark side is probably more, I would say, anticipating the coming of the Antichrist than we are the coming of Christ. And in some Mm -hmm. sense, you can even say that the dark side is hoping Jesus does come back soon so that they can get on with their business. And I think that that very well could happen in 2024. Oh, yeah, no doubt. You know, when it talks about the, I think to be able to carry on a conversation about the restrainer, you know, and the Holy, being the Holy Spirit, that I don't know that Christians have a very good handle on what's taking place here. It's in 2 Thessalonians 2, 6 through 7. It says, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time, talking about the Antichrist, for the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. It says now on he until he be taken out of the way, yeah. and so we see that it, we're going to have this time of I guess you <laughs> the great restrainer of course is the Holy Spirit, and he's the one that restrains, or he's the one that says in the NIV it says the one who holds back, yeah. KJV says, he who letteth or he who holds back or he who's holding down. Anyway, so whoever this is, it's hindering the advancement of the Antichrist is what it's doing. Yeah. And so once that, that yeah. Holy Spirit is taken out, then we see that we'll start having more of the advancement. And I'll have to say this, Jeff, I wonder if the size or volume, if you will, that's not the right way to say it, but you'll get my drift. Could it be that the quantity of the restrainer is based on how many believers we have on the planet? Yeah, that's right. But I'm that's, just saying that right. because the Holy Spirit's yeah. in the believers. That's exactly and, uh, right. And, I, and more... I would have to say just to that point, Alan, and in keeping with this article, some of the headlines he reports tells us that many, I just believe this, you know, Ron Ross just passed away. We did a little, Mm -hmm. he was a friend of ours and we have seen, we even talked about there's lists out there in articles of leaders in the Christian faith that's gone on to be with the Lord this past year. We're losing seasoned warriors in the body of Christ Mm -hmm. at a monumental rate and no one is taking up their spot. Nobody's replacing. And because there is that going on, listen to some of these headlines. CNN reported a humanitarian crisis worsens in Gaza as Israel and Hamas war rages. CBS News reports Biden announces $250 million more in military aid to Ukraine. USA Today reports this. Listen to this. Voters split on Donald Trump being disqualified from the Colorado battle. Yahoo News had a headline that read this, 2024 will see deadly political violence in the streets. I mean, think about that. Listen to this. Fox News reported parents speak out after their daughter was assigned to share bed with a trans student on a school trip and told to hide it. The AP News reports one-fourth of the United Methodist churches in the U.S. have left in a schism over the LGBTQ ban. The High Wire, their headline is, is top Japanese virologist warns of manufactured Omicron strain to the virus. So these are just some of the headlines out there. Now, what it tells me is, is that as the believers leave this earth, the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is being lifted. And I think that Mm -hmm. in the scope of evangelism, we're not replacing these saints of God that's leaving the earth by way of death. 
And and there's less and less of the restraining power on the earth. And that's why darkness is prevailing and why it's getting dark. Well, you know, in Second Thessalonians 2, Thessalonians 2, 3, it says, Jeff, don't let anyone deceive you in any way or by any means, Mm -hmm. for that day will not come. Talking about the second coming Mm -hmm. until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness (coughs) lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. So that lets you see the Antichrist, the actual Antichrist, Jeff, I don't think can be revealed because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. on That's right. That's exactly right. And so why is the rapture of the church necessary? You got to remove the Holy Spirit so that the Antichrist does show himself. That's exactly right. And then and then he'll show himself as being God. Well, how can he do that? Is because God's Holy Spirit's left the premises. And mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, Jeff, when the, the Holy Spirit leaves a church, leaves the premises, even though he's still on this earth, he still removes his presence. Yeah. When God removes his presence, Jeff, in a local church or in an individual, now that is a terrible time. Yes, it is. It's a terrible time. And I'm yeah. afraid, Jeff, the Holy Spirit can leave a lot of churches or a lot of people. People, and they won't even know he's gone. They don't realize he's even left. That's scary. You know, I heard one preacher preach this, and I, I'm not so sure he's not right. He said the rapture of the church, if it takes place on Saturday, most churches would, won't even realize that it happened. Wow. And, and, I, and it makes you wonder. I mean, it really does, because for a while, I was really intrigued and passionate about a, a statement that I felt like was just dropped into my spirit on coming to full faith in Christ. I think there's a lot of people that believe Jesus was a good teacher. He was a historical figure, but they haven't come to faith in him as the Christ. Yeah, and there is yeah. a big difference. There is yeah. a huge difference. You know, it goes on to say, and now you know what is holding him back, you know, that he will be revealed in his proper time. But the part that's concerning us, I guess, until the Antichrist is revealed, Jeff, there's kind of a secret power of lawlessness out there at work, the Bible says. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And it says, and then the lawless one will be revealed. So it's like a under a secret lawlessness if you will. Yeah. You know, it's looking more obvious all the time, but it is being stealth and secret, Jeff, because how did it take us over right under our noses? We didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. How that's can exactly. you say, when you say defund the police, if that's not the spirit of lawlessness at work, I don't know what you call it. That's right. I mean, come on, somebody. That's right. And as close as we are to uh, civil conflict in our own nation and to read headlines from a social media platform that says that 2024 will see deadly political violence in the streets. That is lawlessness. It's also reminiscent of the spirit of the second rider of the four horsemen where peace is taken from the earth and violence abounds. That comes from the spirit of lawlessness. And we're seeing that. We're seeing these things. And I guess my point is, as we see this darkness In more vivid terms, it just, I cannot help but believe that less and less of the restraining power is on the earth to restrain governments. I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit is not as powerful and even more so in individuals' lives, but it just seems to me to be apparent and obvious that the governments of the world's growing darker and darker. It just means to me that less and less believers are in positions of power around the world. Well, what in the world can you imagine, Jeff, at how bad things are now with the Holy Spirit here? Exactly. How bad is it going to be when the Holy Spirit's taken out? I'm like Chuck Smith kept saying when he was wow. preaching through Revelation. He just kept saying, look, you don't want to be here. Is that what he said? That, yeah, over and over again. <laughs> he'd, he'd say, you, you, he'd, don't, he'd, you don't want to be here you when, don't when this happens. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm telling you what. Can you imagine? And in all honesty, Jeff, it appears to me that the presence of the Holy Spirit has already left a lot of businesses. Yes. Now, as a Holy, I, I would almost venture to say before the rapture of the church that the Holy Spirit is already removing Himself from certain people, from plants, from I believe it. nations, from, from believe counties, it. from churches. That's I right. think we're seeing. I mean, I just saw an article yesterday on in in Europe on 
how many I, it was I, it was over 50 percent of the churches now and i'm talking about ancient churches i'm talking about church buildings that i would preserve them just for historical value but it was a big cathedral i mean incredible inside and they turned it into a skateboarding park right exactly same thing's been happening in wales over the last 30 years all of the the church buildings that used to be packed full during the revival in yeah, wales. 1900 now, yeah yeah they're, they're now they've been renovated as warehouses and as uh, saloons and pubs, different things like that. It's evident to me that the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is being withdrawn in some areas. And I still maintain and I hold to the fact that we can have a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit in our lives, but corporately, nationally, governmentally, in those areas, we're seeing the Holy Spirit withdraw yeah. His presence. And it's well, I'm still praying for revival myself. Yeah, me too. I mean, I Lord too. Jesus. I want it to be one small step from earth to heaven, as you said years ago. Yeah. I'm looking for that. And I think that we can, as individuals, we can enjoy that. I think that's not just possible, but it is a practical solution to where we are, is that Mm -hmm. we individually get as close to the Lord as we can, and Uh we pray as a mandate from the Word of God, Psalm 61 King David cried out, hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I, for you have been my refuge and a strong tower against the enemy. And I think that is the mandate of the day for the people of God is to simply pray and to seek the face of God. And in doing that, we can have individual revival while we live in a dark world. Most definitely. Well, the children of God can still walk under the protection of God and the provision of God, Jeff. Yes. Yeah. And the peace of God, even all of this is going on. I'll tell you, when the hindrance, when hindrance to all evil is removed and evil is turned loose with no restriction, if you will, this will not be, why would you want to be here? This is not yeah. the place you want to be. And a lot of people, though, are going to find there. You're even going to have some believers converted in this time, Jeff, but they'll have to endure. Yeah, uh, that's the, right. They'll have that's to right. endure to the end. But why do they have to endure to the end? Well, the reason is, is Jesus comes back with all of the saints. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit's in the saints. Yeah. And with Jesus. Right. And they return. So you got to endure to that end, which yeah. you'll you know as well as I do, you'll probably be martyred. But you'll be riding back with them. But those, there'll be evidently some alive. But you still have to endure to that ending time when the Holy Spirit comes back. So you have an opportunity to be filled with God's Spirit. So that's pretty sobering information, I think, Jeff. Absolutely, we, it uh, is. Yeah. Now, as he goes on to say, it says here, his, his point of encouragement is secure yourself with God's Word. <laughs> I think that's the truth. I want to say the Word of God has so many promises for the believer Alan, in what he wrote, he said, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that's the word of God. And if we secure ourselves with God's word, then we can enjoy peace and revival in a time of great distress. We did a podcast Sunday on, and we talked about during that podcast, the voice of God. And here he quotes a a verse scripture, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow and I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. And I got to tell you, Those are promises that you can hold on to during times of great distress like we're going to face in this coming year. And those those promises from the Word of God can keep us in peace. And I'm excited about the prospect of digging deeper into God's Word during this coming year. And I think we're going to have to have it if we're going to survive. I think we are too, Jeff. As we're closing out today, we want people to know that our friend Ron Ross will have a memorial service December the 6th at New Life Church in Taylorsville, North Carolina. You can go online at newlifenc.com and to get directions, but that will be Saturday, December the 6th at 2 p.m., 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll have this memorial service and all's invited for Ron that know Ron and would like to and hear our voice. 
also we will be live streamed. And Jeff, we want to invite everybody as they hear this podcast that the home base for Smith and Rowland Show is Kingdom Prophetic Society. Yeah, that's where, we, that's where we live. If you don't know where Jeff and I live, it's at Kingdom Prophetic Society. And you can find us there at Kingdom Prophetic Society dot org. One word. Yeah, well, that's right. Kingdom Prophetic Society dot org. And you can go there and hear all of our shows, find out what we're doing. Jeff writes articles. We'd love for you to join. You yeah. can click there. Uh, you can join Kingdom Prophetic Society. We'd love for you to. And as you can, when you join, you will daily get a podcast and uh, you have access to our other things there. So we invite you to come yeah. and be a part of us as we continue. We think this is going to be an exciting year, Jeff. And uh, Yes, it is. Going to be a lot going on. Yeah, boy. Okay, buddy. So All right, Alan Smith. Well, listen, you have a good day. You do see the if same. You can write up a little better introduction for tomorrow. Yeah, well, I listen, I want everyone to be waiting with bated breath when the show begins. It's going to be incredible how I introduce this podcast. That's exactly right. All right, right buddy. You're going to get an Emmy for that. All right, buddy. See you. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank you for joining today's Smith and Rowan show. You can check out our website at kingdompropheticsociety.org and our daily unplugged podcast at smithandrollinshow.podbean.com. You can also join us on Amazon, Apple, or Spotify.